A heavily redacted version of the affidavit calling for the search being released today by the Department of Justice. We're also learning new information about some of those documents which led to that search. Dr. Mark Clausen, professor of law and history at Cedarville University, joins us right now. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Clausen. Uh, initially, I want to get your takeaway from what was a heavily redacted version of the affidavit released today. Well, we still don't know a whole lot, obviously, because of the redaction, but I'm not sure we would have known a whole lot even with the, if it hadn't been redacted. So we redacted roughly half of it uh, to protect, potentially protect witnesses and informants, and that's valid. Uh, most agencies would do that. Um, now, the thing is, the affidavit is the document that goes along with the warrant and supports the probable cause for the warrant to be granted. So at this point, it's only from the perspective of the law enforcement agency, the FBI. And you also have the issue of the um, informants and the people who participated in giving information whether we know whether they're reliable. We won't know any of that unless or until that gets to court. Yeah, a, a lot of it redacted, yes, but what was not redacted, however, Dr. Clausen, was the mentioning of, of all those uh, documents that were yes. classified, secret, top secret. We're not talking about just a couple. And keep in mind right. that having just one document uh, has led to the arrest and, and, and being placed in jail for some people. We're talking about yes. over 180 classified, secret, or top secret documents, uh, that was not redacted. So doesn't that then say that or suggest to at least a certain degree that this was a legitimate law enforcement action? Well, I'll give partial credit here. Um, for one thing, if you're, going to, if you're going to allege that he violated certain laws, then those laws contain a what's called a mens rea, a state of mind, an intent and what they haven't done is support the intent to violate those laws in such a way that they would put the country in danger. It could be, we don't know, I'm not saying one way or the other, but it could be that he was just messy. His aides were just messy in getting all those out. Um, we don't know. But that's know on him, that. Dr. Clausen. That, that, that's on the president. That's on the person who has the security clearance. They know with that clearance that they are responsible for those documents. And, and once he left the White House, he no longer had the clearance. So that's on him. That's upon the person with the clearance to take care of those documents, is it not? Yes, it is. All I'm saying is uh, we don't know what the intent was. And you have to prove the intent as well as the action itself under the statutes that he's being alleged to have violated. So he could have violated those, but we won't know yet. We actually have a trial, potentially. Right. Uh, just a couple of seconds left, Dr. Clausen. If that is, in fact, uh, sensitive uh, material that the uh, affidavit suggests, top secret and secret, uh, what kind of jeopardy could the former president be in? And the Espionage Act could be up to 10 years in prison and a pretty large fine. So we're not talking about just a few months or a few days in prison. Yeah, and we're not just talking about taking a stapler from the White House either. Dr. Mark Clausen, <laughs> uh, professor of law and history at Cedarville University. Always great talking to you, Dr. Clausen. These are heavy issues. Thank you so much for helping us put into uh, perspective.